So the sequence we're looking for is pronation, separation, supination, pronation. Thanks for clicking on the video. My name's Tom Alsop, and today I'm gonna to share with you some advice that I'm gonna to give to one of my video analysis clients. And I thought it'd be interesting because I'm gonna recommend that he pats the dog. And in a, quite a few of my videos in the past, I've basically said that patting the dog is rubbish. Today I'm gonna to recommend it. So when I'm demonstrating these forehands, I have a tendency to go pronation, supination, pronation. And this supination bit, getting in the slot, squaring up the racket head, the strings will be facing the floor slightly. But this position is so important that I tend to miss out what naturally should happen, where you go from the pronation, you lower the racket down, you get it away from your body to generate a little bit more momentum, and the strings naturally face the floor before you come in to the supination, before you lag and get into the slot. Now, one of the reasons that I don't like pat the dog is because so many people get stuck in this position. And again, this is such an important part of the stroke where you supinate the arm and the racket squares up, whether that's Federer where he's slightly more straight or whether it's Djokovic where he'll be more bent or Kyrgios where he's really bent. Getting in the slot here is really important. And there's a lot of people who think that this pat the dog is... Uh, a position to be in and you really need to pass through that real quick one quick stroke of the dog don't go patting it for a minute and some people get stuck there and then from this position they struggle to get in the slot and they'll pull into this position the arm will be too stiff or they'll bend the arm but they'll do it in a way where they're just pulling it instead of supinating the arm to create the uh, the lag in the slot so I've just seen so many players struggle with getting into this position where they're patting the dog and not being able to get out of it in the right way. Anyway, Mark sent me a video and you can see here how much progress this guy has made through sending me videos and me just responding, telling him what he should work on next. However, in his last video, he's telling me how from here to here, it's just so wristy and unstable. So he's going from this position straight into the supination position, and it's just unstable. It's actually hurting his, his wrist a little bit. Instead of my wrist getting into this position as I turn, it seems to get into this position. And from here is a big movement to get all the way back to there. And I've got this feeling in my forehand that it's like very floppy like it's out of control. And I think it might be because I'm getting here instead of getting there. And then from here, it's this big, very wristy movement to, to get it back here again. Um, and I've also get like quite a lot of wrist pain here and this, this tendon here. And you know, I don't know if it's because it's moving such a through such a big range. So it's just a feeling of not, I don't have stability in the forehand. Now, he was thinking about instead of starting like this because this leaves you a lot of work to do to go from here to here if he could should just start in this position now mark i like this position because it's natural if i just do this with my shoulders all right and just turn my shoulders this hand position is natural for this racket position this just adds more wrist so this position is fine but what you need to do is go from the pronation part of the swing to extend your arm a little bit further, a little bit lower down, and then supinate gradually. So instead of going pronation, supination, and it being all whippy, give yourself a little bit of time and gradually move into the slot. Take a little bit more time to go from pronation to lower the racket away and below the ball and gradually move into this slot. You'll have a lot more time and a lot more stability as you come in here. It won't be quite as, as wristy. So the sequence we're looking for is pronation, separation, supination, pronation. Pronation, separation, supination, pronation. Now I'm saying that's 
going to give you more time. Now, obviously, if you're going from pronation to supination, you can get it done a little bit quicker. But if you get this racket back, you get that separation a little bit earlier. Then as you come into the supination, you'll give yourself more time to create this position, to get into the slot. It won't have to happen quite as fast. So it seems like you have less time because the swing is bigger, but you'll have more time to get into this position, which will be a lot smoother and a lot easier to execute. All right, I hope you guys got something out of that and it helps you with your own forehand. If you're looking for another video, check this one out. I'm helping a player to generate a little bit more lag bit more racket speed and ultimately hit a bigger forehand. It'll probably help you with your forehand. Check it out and I'll talk to you soon.